when it comes to the Houston Astros. Uh, Ocho texting in, this roster doesn't string hits together, doesn't steal bases well, doesn't run the bases well, and doesn't do the little things well enough to win championships. They even have an identity. It's not pitching and defense like 2017. That's Ocho. That's their number one in starters ERA. But here's the, here's the other thing, the 8807 on the other side of things. Astros have played 3% of their games. That's That's less than what I have of – you know what? Our starters, mm. our starters are filthy as we knew they would be. We're winning the World Series this year. Book it. So you have one guy saying, hey, chill out. It's 3% of the year. Uh, Astros are going to win the World Series because the pitching has been dominant. Starting pitching has been dominant. And then you have Ocho. They have no identity. Sky's falling. They're terrible at baseball. I disagree with Ocho. I, I would pad the brakes on the other one, but I believe that this team is still going to be a team that's competing for the uh, World Series title. I just look at my first thing, like you brought up, like where their starting pitching sits in terms of baseball and how literally dominant they've been. And in this early in the season, you can only hope that they get better and they get healthier. When they get healthier, they're going to get better. It, they look fantastic. It, so you can hang your hat on that. We just had a team score 10 with five home runs the night before. Mm -hmm. So let's slow down on this team doesn't have any offense either. And we've got guys that we know, at least one of them, normally gets going. Has some ebbs and flows in, in Bregman, but he normally gets going. The rest of those guys, some of the guys that we weren't expecting to get going like they've already gotten going, it just looks like it's going to be a more complete lineup when when everybody, when everybody it starts clicking a little bit more and they get deeper into the season. I'm not worried about one solid identity. It's a solid baseball team, and we're 3% in. Uh, 2787 should have, should have went after Votto. Nah, Brandon Belt's better than Votto. Like, at this stage at this in their point, careers, yeah. Brandon Belt's better than Votto. And Brandon Belt's sitting out there. Go get Brandon Belt. Uh, 6030 says that, uh, can we just take a hit and get rid of Abreu? Y'all hate Singleton, but Abreu is done done. Neither one of them is very good. Like, I'm not defending Abreu, but Abreu, eh, Abreu still belongs on a major league roster, I think. Uh, starting as much as he does, probably not. Singleton is a 4A player. Like, mm -hmm. Singleton does not belong on a major league baseball roster. But I want Brandon Belt. Like, I want Brandon Belt to be the starting first baseman against right-handed pitching. And I'm going to continue to bang on that table until somebody picks up Brandon Belt. Uh, four one three three. When giving days off, Dusty in a spot, just plug a guy into the spot for a guy he's replacing. That's wrong, in my opinion. That's a it's a valid point. Uh, Dusty used to do that he all did. the time. Like mm -hmm. Dubon would play second and bat lead off. Um, yeah, Brandon T. This team will be playing in October. That's all that matters. Six games in. Not worried one bit. Where's your worry level? One to ten. We we, we grade things around here. Two and a half. Okay, mine's like a one three. I'm, I'm like every you could have won every single one of these games every uh -huh. single, and I know you didn't and you can't just you can't do the what if game and what you know ifs and buts candies and nuts horseshoes hand grenades blah 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 but uh, this is still a good team it, it just, is I, I'm not I'm not worried about it because we've we're in our second series of the season it, it's way too soon to be passing permanent judgment judgment or serious judgment on this squad now does the middle relief bother me yes but also I'm realistic in stating the fact uh, on multiple occasions, when you get some of this starting pitching back, you could be in a, a surplus of arms where some of those pitchers that don't make the rotation end up strengthening the point of weakness, and you're still fine. I like the fact that Pena is hitting the ball. I like the fact that you've got guys that are picked up where they left off or other guys that are starting to hit the baseball from, from the jump. Yiners obviously not hasn't missed a beat. I think it's a better offensive lineup. I think the pitching's going to work itself out, and I think they're going to be fine. 6030, you wanted Mancini too. You shouldn't manage a team. Do you forget about the game saving defensive play Trey. of Trey Mancini? You don't win a World Series without Trey Mancini, and you have me to thank for that. I said, get Trey Mancini for his glove. You need Trey Mancini to be on the Astros for his defensive efforts. I saw the vision. I saw what Mancini could bring to the table as a defensive first baseman. I didn't want his bat. I didn't want his offense. I wanted his glove, mm -hmm. and his glove saved you for winning a World Series. Tongue firmly in cheek. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I banged that drum pretty no, hard. I mean, we all yeah, wanted Mancini. Yeah. Uh, I thought that that would work out swimmingly. He's still in really baseball didn't. somewhere, right? I think you guys, I think in minor league. Yeah, uh, I think that's right. I think it's Miami. a minor league deal. I think it's Miami. Is it Miami? Yeah. Um, I'm getting the feeling a spot is in over his head. I never wanted a spotter for the position. TBH, this team does not feel well managed to start the season. Your your reaction yeah, to that. Again, too soon from a guy that was in every game in the Yankee series, and I don't think he mismanaged. He didn't tell Jake to fall on his face. He didn't tell Altuve to make two base running blunders. I just don't see how you can be that critical. Yes, I think you made a great point. I think the first game of the year, I think he was managing like it was a World Series game or a playoff game when it might have been a little too soon to be that 
that intense in, in making moves early, like even pulling Jake out after in a bat or two. Whatever. But – I don't think it's Joe Espada's fault at this point in the season. We just all need to relax a little bit. Yeah, I don't think he's in over his head. The The aggression on the bases isn't something that I love. And using Hater twice in the Yankee series in the ninth inning when you're losing mm-hmm. the game uh, was awkward as well. Uh, 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. We are now elite. We are into the Elite Eight of the Killer B Fight Club Tournament. Two matchups today. Regional finals in the Palillo region and the Ralph Cooper region. Who will advance to the final four? The Killer B Fight Club Tournament continues next on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Time for the Killer B Fight Club Tournament to continue. 
couple of fights yesterday. Let's give you the results of those fights before we continue. Actually, I wanted to give this Justin Verlander nugget. Uh, Ari Alexander tweeted uh, a few minutes ago, Verlander will throw a bullpen Thursday. If it goes fine, he'll start Sunday in Sugar Land. So, so Verlander. So Thursday, that's a little short turnaround. How many, he's not really throwing a big bullpen then, right? I mean, that's. I think it's just your normal throw day between starts. Okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty normal. Doesn't it feel like we've heard the same Verlander news for about two and a half, three weeks? No. He's throwing a rehab assignment on Sunday? No. Well, no, That's no, well, very different. Okay, specifically the rehab <laughs> assignment, no. But it feels like it's, oh, oh he's throwing a bullpen. If it, if it goes well, then we're going to progress to the next thing, and he keeps going back to more bullpens. I think I think his last bullpen was like kind of a you're going to go at a game tenacity. Like sure, maybe he did up downs. That's true. And then today's probably more your normal like throw day between starts. Okay. So, like, his his previous bullpen day, he was going with tenacity up-downs, like you mentioned. Today was probably his normal between-start bullpen, where it's just, like, soft, ca- you know, toss, yeah, get the throwing it, like, 30%, and, yeah, yeah. and then it start on Sunday. So, that was probably what they simulated. Uh, they said they would need more than one start, so maybe this starts Sunday sometime next week, and then I think he's back. Yeah, I would I agree he's with back. that. Did we, have, did, we, did we write down when we thought he'd be back? Uh, we said that following week. We didn't do the guess the date. Okay. Too soon, I think. Too, it's coming back too quickly. All right, so yesterday we had two fights in the Killer B Fight Club bracket. A couple of matchups to advance to the Elite Eight. One of them was an absolute blowout. Seth Payne fighting the show, Highway to Hell versus Highway to Hell. Seth Payne won 83% to 17%. Is that her biggest margin of victory? I think yeah, so. I think that was the, yeah. It's deserved, but actually, Payne over Wexler should have been a bigger margin. But I think so, too. But uh, Seth Payne is UConn, and the yeah. show is San Diego San State. State. Yeah. Seth Feels Payne like kills it. the show on his way to the Elite Eight. The other matchup yesterday, a little bit closer, but really not that tight. John Granado blasts past Landry Locker. 65% to 35%. You, it seemed like you enjoyed that one. I did, and the people have spoken. <laughs> you don't have to provoke me much on that one. I think yes. I know which way uh, Blankers voted. Yeah, no I doubt. Just, I just had to put a little bit in the water. And the people, <laughs> the people, Granado and his people, they get the job done. Forget about it. I didn't have More to throw a whole lot in the water. Hurtful. Just a little drop of blood. Don't, uh, Granado <laughs> shouldn't be so shocked if he's blocked today on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have two fights today with a spot in the final four on the line in both of them. First off in the Charlie Palillo region, Clint Sterner facing off against Adam Clanton, part of the A-team versus the Baytown baddie star of the Clint Sterner show. Uh, Jeremy, you're arguing for a man you used to work with. Uh, you're arguing for the Baytown baddie. Oh, Clint you Sterner. can't do that to me. You cannot do that <laughs> hey, to me. Hey, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, Joel Blank, you are arguing for Adam I think Adam he's Clint. legit mad, too. Yeah, I know. I think he's legit mad. I have to go first, too, you right? You do, yeah. Age before beauty. <laughs> my wife's in my corner, so dang it, I got a chance to take this thing home. I got Iverson tattoos. I, I am the man with a plan, and I always understand that I can win this game if I tweet my followers and I get a lot of vitriol on everybody against H-Town, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all the people that I say good morning to to make sure that I say good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Clint Sterner because they will make sure that I find a way to win. But, but, but how's he going <laughs> to fight, though? <laughs> In a Affliction T-shirt? I don't know. <laughs> that's my line. Right. Don't show. laugh at that. He stole my joke. It's still funny. Take credit. Yeah, take credit for it, but it's still funny. Yeah, okay. I'll take credit for it then. Um, the Baytown baddie is going to stop a mud hole right into you. Uh, Don't, say walk you dry? Don't say Frogs, me. Don't say me. He's going <laughs> to walk you dry. He's tougher than a $2 steak. Yep, yep. Um, when frogs grow wings, they fly, and they try to be like the Baytown baddie. Uh, the Baytown baddie doesn't need any sort of talk to beat one half of the A-team. He's a former professional athlete. Little little Butterfingers, but that's okay. You, you can have little Butterfingers to win a fight. There's that to hold a football in this fight, he's, so he's fine. He's, he drinks milk, so his vitamin D intake is a very high level. I'm talking his calcium. I'm kidding. It's an inside it's joke within the show. Clint Sterner's bigger. He's stronger. He's faster. He's a better athlete. He jumps higher. He talks with a little better Southern hospitality. Clint Sterner you know rolls. Higher? Uh, he's a former athlete. You're saying Clanton isn't? Did he play professional sports? No, but I mean, he still could be an athlete. Well, uh, he didn't play professional sports. I'm going with the professional athlete. Okay. 
professional athlete. Brian, who's, how you got this who's, one going? Who's yeah. younger? Uh, Tell the tape. Oh, that's. I think it's pretty close. It's got to be Clanton. I mean, you Clint, sure? No, but I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't. I think they're I about think the they're same age. I think they're both in their mid 40s. I guess they're no? about the same age. Yeah, I think they're both in the mid 40s. Really? Let's see. Clint Sterner, fumble, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> when year did that happen? Let's see. That's the easiest way. He was 98. I think he was a junior that year. So he's probably six years older than me. I'm 38. Yeah, I've been 40. I guess he's 44, 45. Hey, hmm. Town Batty. I thought he might have been What do you think AC is? 42, 41. Okay. They're probably about the same age. Uh, Google says he's 46, Clint Sterner. Okay, so I was right there. All right, yeah. so get the other one. So I if think you... I, I would guess Adam Clan's like forty-four. Uh, that would be my guess. Okay. I I would I would say he's uh, early to to mid forties, but he's younger US, than, he's US, younger than the U.S. phone book says that he's uh, forty-two years old. Okay, I nailed it. There we go. And I don't want to do any more of that. All right, so that's not enough in the, of an age advantage. There's an Adam Arkland that's twenty-seven that lives in Alexander, Arkansas. You think that's the one? No. <laughs> he was, he's been trolling Clint Sterner in Arkansas. There's a Jeremy Branham who is a uh, criminal. Oh, yeah. No, that's the, yeah. It, oh, really? Yeah, not a good criminal either. Mm. It's really bad. It really, there, tam- really a, tarnishes the name. There's a uh, there's a true crime podcast I listen to. They'll always tell you about people not to Google when you Google the, the name of the criminal they're talking about it because they'll come up with all sorts of like. You're one of them? No, no. I, I mean, maybe. I, I haven't Googled my name. But it's it, yeah, you feel bad for these people who are just like teachers and doctors and whatnot. Sad. But they share the name with uh, some uh, scumbag. What's well, like that one guy who's uh, was it the radio guy? His name's Jerry Sandusky. Yes, yes. He was the Ravens yes. play-by-play yeah. guy. Yeah, yes. yep. His name's Jerry Sandusky. You yeah. poor guy. The name was fine. Until... I would change my name. I... But he was already like in his fifties. Don't at that care. Point. Yeah. Do not care. It'd be like having what's the is it Feinstein or whatever Feinstein who's the Michael g- Feinstein no oh, who's you're, the you're who's, guy that with Trump and all that no the guy that's in jail that was the movie director that would take advantage of women. oh Harvey Harvey Weinstein oh, Harvey Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein. like if I my, if my name was Harvey Weinstein I'm changing my name like that <laughs> yeah I, I yeah I don't know once you reach a certain age though I, I think you're you're locked what in what was the dude that was setting up all the <laughs> there's a curb chicks episode chicks for all the Epstein. The, Epstein. Epstein. Yeah. There's that, a curb episode where that guy, his Larry David's manager, where they think he looks like Harvey Weinstein, oh, yeah. and they actually think it's him. <laughs> it's a funny <laughs> episode. All right, to the judges. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. So this is yeah. No need to delay. Clint Sterner. Look, the the age advantage for Adam Clanton's not enough. I'm taking the professional athlete in this fight. All the rage that Adam Clanton has is going to get him buried in the H by Clint Sterner. <laughs> all right. Next fight in the Ralph Cooper region. Another spot in the. Final four on the line here. Winner of this one gets the winner of the Baytown Batty and the affliction-wearing T-shirt, son of a gun. Uh, one that was your team. idea. What was that? The affliction. What? Yeah, I'm just yeah, giving thank you, you credit. You're welcome. Um, if Sterner wins, does he get the affliction T-shirt? <laughs> high stakes. It is. High stakes. Very high stakes. Affliction T-shirt on the uh, pole match. <laughs> uh, Booker T versus Paul Gallant in the Ralph Cooper region. Who's arguing for Booker? Who's arguing for Paul? I, I got to give Booker T to the wrestling fan. So uh, oh, okay. Jeremy will be arguing for the five-time, five-time, five-time world champion. Actually, Weren't you six-time fired? world champion. Booker I, I T. Was. I hate you on both of these. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like but arguing I, for Paul? Why didn't you? Yeah, why didn't you? Uh, no, I don't. To be honest with you, you ask the question, I'll answer it. You know damn well why too. Because if you don't think you can beat the sh- uh, the uh, Larry and Stafford, what the hell am I arguing for you to beat Booker T? Why Not that you? I'd have a chance to argue that. This anyway. This is your chance to redeem yourself as a defense attorney. Make the case. Make the the indefensible yeah. case. Why did you almost call Larry and Stafford the show? I don't know. <laughs> Moving right along. Five times. Because we five just got done saying that the show was in the fight and he got beat last night, and I'm thinking. Paul was in passing, said what he said yesterday, and I'm like, and I was already still mad about it because I said Paul would beat Larry and Stafford. All right, arguing on the uh, case of Booker, five time, five time, five time. You don't put world champion next to the name of nobody's. My guy has world champion next to his name, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. Actually, not even five times. He's a six time world champion. Stays in phenomenal shape. He plays sports every single day in his backyard. Hits the spinner Rooney. Incredible athlete. Great on the mic, except for that one time. Time. Booker T wins easily over Paul Gallant, winner of the Ralph Cooper region, on his way to the Final Four. Paul Gallant owns a cat. You can't do that if you're not a manly man. I, I think that Paul Gallant as a cat owner is a big feather in his cap. Paul Gallant is the kind of guy that doesn't care what you think. He's just going to find a way to scratch and claw and get the victory. He's going to go I, I, I all guess. over, run all over the ring to make sure that Booker T has to chase him. He's going to pick his spots. 
He's going to make sure that he tells Booker T how good he is, and then he's going to actually see it through by trying to dance around just long enough to get him down once and then run for the hills. He led with he owns a cat. Yeah, I, I, I did. But he said he was a tough guy, which, thank you, Joel, that means I'm also a tough guy because I also have a cat. So. Well, I mean, oh. I, a tough guy by proxy. Uh, look, yeah, I, I, I got to go Booker T. Jo he's Joel, led with Joel cat. Was, Joel was uh, d dealt the impossible hand here. Booker Thanks. T, five-time champion, is going through with a, I'll say, not an not a easy win over Paul Gallant, because Paul Gallant, I think, does Scrappy. have the cardio advantage. He can claw run like around. like a cat. Yeah, That's claw him like claw. a cat. Make, Scratch and claw. He can make it a good fight, but Booker T ultimately prevails. Yeah, Paul didn't think he would beat Larry, St Larry and Stafford in yeah, well, yeah, See, I missed that. Why does he think he, why, why couldn't he so beat So we Larry talked Stafford? about it. Jeremy no. and I were talking about it the day before, because they got into a big Twitter spat. And, and called and, him fat. And, and so we Paul were talking. Paul called Larry's fat? He called him fat. And we both were on the side of Paul people, so. winning the fight and Paul walks in and goes hey I really appreciate you guys having my bag I don't know if I, I don't think I could beat Larry I go what'd you say <laughs> he goes yeah I, just, I don't think I could beat him is that why you guys put up the poll yeah, yeah. I'm like what are you doing <laughs> I think Larry and Stafford won that poll, too. Uh, I <laughs> so did, maybe did. Paul's the realist. He did. he did. Maybe the Paul's the realist here. Uh, 2585, I had a friend named, name his kid Isis back in 2011. What? Isis? <laughs> it was before Isis was Isis. Sure, This sure. was in 2011. Okay, he named that, his kid Isis that in is, 2011. That's unfortunate. That Ooh. is one I would change my name on, for that sure. That is unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> I would change my name. Could you imagine the teacher no. taking role? <laughs> is Isis here? <laughs> Isis. <laughs> present. <laughs> ISIS is present. Uh, 713 780. I hope it was ESPN. a female. Why? It doesn't matter. Because before the real ISIS, the almighty ISIS was with Shazam. The more you know. I'm just telling you, it was a show, actually. Uh, where I, in what decade? Uh, maybe the 80s. Uh, Rockets lose, Warriors win. It's sad, but it's going to take a miracle now, isn't it? It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Uh, it's time, basketball bettors. It's March Mania. Brand, I'm here to tell you about BetUS.com. You can bet on all the games, all the basketball games, college or pro, pro games every night. I endorse one sportsbook and casino. That's BetUS.com. They've been driving to the basket for over 30 years, over three decades. And this year, BetUS has an epic three-pointer, a 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. That's right. The industry's craziest 125% sign-up bonus, not on your first deposit, not on your second deposit, all three, plus 10% gambler's insurance, and there's even more. BetUS accepts crypto and is offering a 200% crypto sign-up bonus. So gambler's insurance and crypto, you don't see that everywhere. March Mania basketball can get it even more exciting with live in-game betting. Who doesn't li love some live in-game betting? Also a blast to check out their casino after the game. A little blackjack, a little roulette, a little craps, where you can get a 250% casino bonus. Get started by visiting BetUS.com or give them a call at 1-800-MY-BETUS to learn all about their bonuses and special offers. BetUS, where the game begins.
You found the killer bees. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank, I'm Branham. We are the bees, ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. Honey Glaze Branham, do you know how funny it would be uh, for Booker to actually wrestle Paul, shake him around like a rag doll, and give him a suplex or whatever Booker eaters do? It's messed up. Um, I would take a bump for Booker T. How severe a, a bump? I don't know. Well, what, what sort of move are we talking? Are we talking? Uh, would you take Is a power a bump? Term? Yeah, you take like a fall. Okay. Like a big bump, like mankind jump, jumping off the hell in the. Oh, staff. you're not doing that. No, I think I don't think I would go anything above the top rope. Would you but, take a power bomb off the top rope? No, just a regular power bomb through a table. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. I would have to be somebody that I know is safe, not some green dude. You got to let that table have a a breakaway too, right? I think they all kind of do. Yeah, they're they're gimmicked. They're yeah. always breaking the exact same spot every time. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna not, need somebody that's who's the only that's gimmicked in wrestling, though. Those guys are. I mean, they are tricky with the way they're able to pull off some of their moves. But I mean, they're real moves. I know they're not. It's not you know like a magician. No, but I'm saying without a, to avoid yeah. injury and still be yeah. able to go top rope and avoid. That's why I would yeah. need a seasoned pro. I'm not. I'm not going to do it from like Brian. I don't want Brian to give me a power <laughs> no, bomb to no, the table. I wouldn't. I, wouldn't power I would bomb end me. up paralyzed. Um, zero three one five. You're showing your age blankers mentioning Shazam and ISIS. No, is, no. is Shazam the Shaq movie? No That's kidding. Real, you think if I was yeah, a, if I was worried about movie. it, you think I'd have mentioned it? You sound what? a little bit sensitive. Was it? Was, no. it was, you uh, always think I'm sensitive. Was Shaq's movie Sh- Shazam or Kazam? Kazam? Kazam is right. That's right. Shazam's the app on the phone that tells you what song is playing. Okay. That's okay. what Shazam is. Is that's where I knew Shazam from? Seven one three seven eight zero ESP. We'll get to the Rockets in a moment. But Pena is uh, is on the HRP list. Like all it says on the comments on like why he wants to talk to us wants to talk to the killer bees what could pena be wanting to talk to the killer bees for maybe it's marital advice maybe well, it's he missed parental his, parental advice he missed his mailbag monday when he mm-hmm. always asks us a very perplexing yeah. question yeah pena why are you bothering us on a wednesday uh i've been busy guys but i mean the guy asked me he just said hey uh he didn't ask me like why do i want to talk to you he just said oh i said hey i'd like to talk to the killer bees that's all i said okay he didn't ask me why i want to talk to them but huh um, who's screening these interns <laughs> anyways yeah, all right go no, ahead he's cool though it's fine <laughs> um so I'm, I'm i'm calling about the astros um do you think it's in their head now that all these these home losses and why they can't win do you think it's just in their head like um, we all say the Yank- we're in the Yankees' head that we that they can't beat us because it's in their head. Do you think it's, it's like that for, for, for our guys here at home? And uh, the second thing I want to say, I'm taking Paul Galan in, in, in that Booker T fight. Uh, I, I saw him in the Royal Rumble like two years ago or something. The dude was gassed after three minutes. His body, he's, 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 they've been through a lot, those wrestlers, man. He, he's hurting really bad. I'm yeah. taking Paul Galan. Thank you. Have a great day. Look, I don't. I think the Astros know that a lot of these wounds are self-inflicted. I, I don't think that there's any. I don't think they're looking at the the you know, or thinking about the home losses. They're just thinking about the losses, knowing that in the Yankees series they were basically tied or winning every single game. You know, as we got from the middle to the late innings, they 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 obviously blew the Blue Jays out in Game One and should have won Game Two. I don't think that this team, as much as we're talking about levels of concern. There is absolutely no concern or panic in a veteran locker room that's done what they've done over the last seven years. Uh, I think it's in their head. I don't. I think it's absolutely in their head. Uh, you lose every game in the ALCS at home. Uh, what was their record like in the last 35 games? Like 7-28 and 28 at Minute Maid Park? Absolutely they're thinking about it. You had, you had players complaining to Chandler Rome about the batter's eye, and they've actually painted last the, it, towards the end of last season, last month or so of the regular season, they added more paint to the batter's eye. It's absolutely in their head. I disagree. I think that Why this, they had more paint? Why are they complaining to Chandler Because Rome? I don't think he's talking about the home and you're talking about things that came up at home. Yeah, at home last year. Right now what they're what they're worried about is writing the ship, just getting wins. I don't think that they're thinking that this is a home thing. They know exactly what it is. It's it's the fact that they have basically imploded and 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 self-destructed in a lot of ways where they weren't right there where they needed to be in a lot of these games. I don't think that they're, they're thinking about the fact that it's still the batter's eye or it's a home game that they're losing. They're just thinking the fact they're losing. One seven one one players are superstitious, so there's no way it's not in their head. They keep losing at home. Yeah, I, I feel like you feel it. Like you, you get the you know the stories, the, the losses start piling up, this amount of wins and this amount of games. I, I think it bothers them. Uh, 713-780-ESP at HRP Listener Line, 713-780-3776. Rockets lost yesterday, 
Warriors won. It's going to take a minor miracle now for the Rockets to make the play in. They're down three from Golden State with seven games to play, and Golden State has the tie break. Now, you do play Golden State tomorrow, so you can make it two with six to play, but it's basically two and a half because that yeah. tie break is worth half a win. Uh, yesterday's game against the Timberwolves, I actually liked the fight. You, know, you were down for a majority of that game, double figures at times. I actually liked the fight from the Rockets to get back in that game, make it tight towards the end. You go into Minnesota, a 50-win team. That was not going to be an easy game. I was actually encouraged with how the Rockets played yesterday. I was too. I mean, even from a guy individually like Van Vliet who was struggling to find it late when they needed him most, he got red hot. They cut it to one. They had opportunities. You know, it's an exciting team to watch. I took away from this that it was entertaining again. It wasn't like they were getting their lunch handed to them all night long. They were down 9, 10, you know, kind of hovering, just hanging in there. But then all of a sudden, they find a, find a way to muster up some energy, make some buckets, and suddenly with a couple minutes to play or less, you're in a one-point ball game, like you said, on the road against a very good basketball team. That says a lot about the makeup of this team and the fact that even with losses, teams are going to respect you. You look at it in the big picture, I think they got to win out or close to it to have even a, a fighter's chance to get uh, in that, that play-in game. And obviously, it's a must-win starting tomorrow night. But at the same time, I'm not disappointed in the fact that they felt what it felt like to have must-win games in April. And they're not getting knocked on their asses and, and, and getting blown out. They're, they're hanging in there throwing haymakers at the end. Edwards was phenomenal in the final minute, minute and a half of the game. Uh -huh. And he's got special talent. But... Don't knock the effort and the fact that you were right there until the bitter end. I thought they did a really good job with Edwards. Uh, you hold him to 21 points, did not make a three, five for 16 from the floor. They got to the free throw line, but, I mean, good players are going to make good plays. I thought they defended him really well. Uh, Nas Reed, who's the one that just killed you. Boy, like, he got that one little hot spell that mm -hmm. just absolutely killed you. Yeah, you're right. Killed you. Uh, Jalen Green had one of those nights where the three-point shot wasn't falling down. But this, these are the games that I want Jalen Green to have. Whenever he's not shooting well from the outside – find me a way to score 20, 25 points. Yesterday was the exact game I'm talking about. There's going to be nights where you can't shoot. Anthony Edwards had a game last night where he had trouble knocking down the three. In fact, didn't make a three. Same same night for Jalen Green. Had trouble making mm -hmm. threes, two for 11. But I wanted to see Jalen Green in a game where he doesn't have the three-point shot, where he can still will you to 20, 25 points. And he did that. It was finishing at the rim nicely. The, the, and to your point, Edwards is, is dunk or nothing, right? When he gets up there, he is looking to posterize you mm -hmm. and then nothing when Jalen Green went to posterize Gobert and pulled it down hung in the air and found a way to not only make the bucket but get fouled you're like man his athleticism is special both of them are but that play by Jalen Green was pretty incredible yeah not many people can do that no no and the fact that he had the wherewithal after realizing mid-flight well this isn't going to turn out so well he's he's right there where I didn't expect him to totally be but to be able to hang Get you know reposition, make the touch shot, take the contact, get fouled, make the th make the three throw, and like you said, so he gets three points on the play, keeps you in the ball game. That was fantastic. Yeah, I think the Rockets are going to be a playoff team next year. I really do. They're playing so much better on the road. They had a seven game road winning streak coming into this game. Like I, I think they're a playoff team next year. Uh, Draymond Green said a couple of weeks ago he didn't give a darn about the Houston Rockets. Uh, Jalen Green said they're watching the Warriors, and then the Kron sensationalized. Uh, that quote. Uh, but Draymond Green yesterday sounds like he cares a little bit about the Rockets. Really big time win for us, especially with uh, the Rockets coming out to play. Um, <laughs> they have lost a couple in a row. And, you know, you, you're three games behind with seven games left and you're losing the tiebreaker. So four games behind in a sense with seven to go. Uh, my math serves me correctly. Tomorrow will be an opportunity to end their season. Eh, tie breaks uh, worth a half. Their playoff hopes. If my math serves me correctly, maybe there will be one more game. I haven't looked that up. Uh, that's just some rough math. <laughs> sounds like Joe George. For Michigan you, State math. It sounds math like Joe George doing out math. There that's going to be like, no, they're not mathematically uh, eliminated. And you like, look at him gaslighting. Great. He's gaslighting. Almost. He's gaslighting mathematicians. Uh, He's gas like, oh, well, I'm the one that's going to do the math, but if I'm wrong, you're the guys who are nerds. Like, he's gaslighting. He's gaslighting before anybody even commented back to him because he knew he was going to be criticized for that because he knew his math was wrong, didn't have confidence in it. We scrapping tomorrow night? 
Uh, what's a good call? He he was obviously taking a shot at Tari Eason here. Sure, Tari yeah, Eason, not Tari Eason, but I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. is it Dylan Brooks or somebody else? Because this team has a propensity to fight in the second half of the season, uh, basically in games and could in, it be like Jabari? physically. Uh, could I don't be think Jabari? I don't think Jabari's got it. Although I shouldn't say they, that. Yeah, they he was might throwing, be they might true. be guarding each other a little bit. They could be in a spot where they get a little physical. I would I would have Jabari in my top two. Yeah, he did get suspended for a game. Yeah, and that was like the second time he fought that guy. Or he didn't fight the guy, but squared up against the guy. Yeah. Uh, I would say Dylan won Jabari, too, for power ranking. I think I think best chance, best case scenario is Dylan. I, yeah. I think that, you know, he already is is looking for who's trying to act up on the other squad. And, you know, Draymond's really good at acting up. I think I think that's a there's a pretty good chance. Because, look, even when you don't think they're going to do it, they do it. And I love it. I love the scrappiness of this team sticking together. Because it, it, not to your point on the Texans, when you got guys that turn their back and walk away when there's a scrap. But this team's got everybody. Everybody's got each other's back. And they, they like to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 5798. I didn't know Draymond Green could do math. Well, he didn't. He was wrong. A tie break is worth half a game. It's worth half a game. It's not worth a full game. It's worth half a game. It's what a tie break's worth. It's worth half a game. That clip was 52 seconds, and he's been about 40 of it going yeah. back and forth about whether or not his math was right. He was gaslighting <laughs> the people that were going to criticize them before the people that had a chance to criticize him never had the opportunity. That was weak by Draymond Green. Weak. Super weak. I wonder if the guys on TNT were ready to use that one. I hope so. You know what the Michigan State football complex is called? No. The Tom Izzo football facility oh yeah i've seen that <laughs> it cracks me up every they time we stayed up all night think of that name <laughs> they, they call the football facility the tom Izzo football facility it's hilarious uh 713-780-ESPN what does the digs move to the texans do in terms of the texans being a super bowl contender it's the killer bees on espn 97.5 and espn 92.5 hey before we go to the break uh, a word for my good friends at x golf katie look chris and his guys they've come up with some great things for you guys to make sure that you get out some on the greatest golf simulators in the area and the only x golf simulators in houston in a, at x golf katie they got a couple of things going on you need to know about one they've got spring leads leagues starting up monday night it's an individual league where you play 18 holes that begins april the 22nd the wednesday night is a two-man scramble league it starts april 24th and they play nine holes you guys want to get in on this the winner receives a brand new custom fit wedge or driver and we're talking about a chance to play on those great golf simulators on over 50 courses worldwide and then that Masters promotion they got going on, Sunday of the Masters, April 14th from 3 to 8 p.m. They have a, Sunday's, a Sunday at the Masters 18-hole scramble tournament. You have to rent the bay. If you ent the, uh, rent the bay, there's only eight of them. Your entry includes your team bay, complimentary food coming straight from Augusta National. Best part, you play the Georgia Country Club course on the most accurate simulators technology has to offer. Space is limited. I know they've sold already sold half of the simulators for that day, but you get in on it because you get the simulator time alone from 3 to 8 p.m. It's worth it. You watch the Masters while you're playing and eating the, the same kind of food. Check them out today. X-Golf Katie. Get a taste of the Masters and so much more.
You're listening to The Killer Bees with Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios. He's Blank on Branham. We are The Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. Texans traded for Stephon Diggs today. They used the second round pick next year that they got from Minnesota. Uh, they also acquired a fifth and a sixth round pick, one of them this year, one of them next year. So, Technically, the Texans traded down 19 spots and acquired Stephon Diggs. There's a few sweeteners attached to the back end. I'm not worried about rounds five through seven. So the Texans traded 23 to 40, 242 and then got Stephon Diggs as part of that as well. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Fan base really excited. Um, what does this do for you in terms of being a Super Bowl contender? Where do the Texans stack up in terms of that conversation? To me... I think to be the best, you got to beat the best. I think that if you're looking at just in the AFC to get to the Super Bowl, I think that they are on that next tier below the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are on a tier all by themselves. Uh, they're sitting in a, pl- uh, in a place based on what they've just done uh, to deserve to be there until someone knocks them off. But I think that they sit on that tier right below the Chiefs along with the Ravens and probably the Bengals, to me, uh, as ter- in terms of the other, the other teams that I think could – actually upset or defeat the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I mean, I think other teams like the Bills making the trade took a step back. The Chargers losing a lot of talent, even no matter what Harbaugh brings to the table, don't. I don't think they're there yet. Uh, I think that they have taken a massive leap to be right firmly in that second tier. And as it relates to the teams on the tier, I think they can compete with the Bengals. I think that with what Baltimore lost in the offseason and what the Texans have gained makes me believe that they can beat the Baltimore Ravens. However, Henry is an interesting wrinkle, but they lost a, a, a significant portion of their offensive line. I think the Texans are right there. Yeah, I don't think that it does a ton for Buffalo. Diggs didn't do anything for them in the final two months of no, the year. No, but overall, what they've lost this offseason, they've, they've taken some hit. Yeah, I don't think it hurts them in the receiver room, though. Uh, I think they'll be fine, and their defense is still good. And, and Allen's one of those unique quarterbacks really, that really doesn't matter a whole lot the receivers around him. Like, Either he's going to throw guys open or he's going to throw interceptions. So, Allen is one of those quarterbacks I don't think necessarily needs fantastic receiver play. And, again, Diggs had games last year where he played 30% of the snaps. Um, I believe that the Houston Texans are a Super Bowl contender. I I look at what they have offensively, and I think that they have, at worst, a top-10 offense. I would even say it's a top-5 offense. Stroud in his second year. Nico, second year after a breakout. Tank Dell, his second year. Hopefully, he's fully healthy. Uh, no, he's he's fully healthy. Hopefully, he stays healthy. Stephon Diggs, happy, has been super productive every single year of his career. You've added, I think, an upgraded running back, even though I'm not as high on Joe Mixon as you are. You brought back Dalton Schultz. You still have the draft to play with. So, I think that they have a top-five offense. I also would say, at worst, they have a top-10 defense that could be top-five-ish. I feel more confident about the offense than I do the defense. But you brought in a guy who gets to the quarterback in Daniil Hunter. Uh, Autry, I think, is going to be an underrated pickup. I love the Al Shire move at middle linebacker because he has speed, can cover the field sideline to sideline. I think the Texans have a top five, top ten offense. I think they have a top ten, top five seems like a reach defensively. And if you have two sides of your ball that are both in the top ten, I think you're a Super Bowl contender. They also have the quarterback. They have the head coach. I look for that core on my Super Bowl contenders. Give me a really good head coach. Give me a really good quarterback. Now they have that. They have a top ten offense. They have a top ten defense. Absolutely, the Houston Texans are Super Bowl contenders. Brian, I don't know if you're going to chime in. I, my, my big thing is is, is to, re, to rebuttal all that. I don't disagree with you, but you got to beat the Chiefs uh, until I and I got to see talking that. About contenders, and I, also, not talking I know, about champs. I know, but I, as I pointed out, I also think that Baltimore beat you twi- twice last year. So that's why I think that they are. I would still put them, even though Baltimore had the best record in the NFL in the regular season. I'd put them right there with Baltimore. I would slide slight just that like a, a tick behind them, but on the same tier, Cincinnati. But I think that they 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 will have a fighting chance to to get to a Super Bowl. So just, wouldn't they be I, a contender then? If they have a fighting chance to get to the Super Bowl, wouldn't they be a contender? Yeah, but in terms of like how I I'm give, I'm I'm like layering who's the the number one contender versus the other guys in the field. I think the sounds like you're not Chiefs willing to put above. them on the top tier, right, or maybe the second yeah. tier. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, and that's kind of what Vegas has. Vegas has them tied with the Ravens as the third favorite to win the Super Bowl, behind only the uh, the Chiefs and the 49ers. Which, 
look, I, I am optimistic. I am excited about the Houston Texans, but the Houston Texans played two games at the Ravens last year, scored zero touchdowns. So you, you got to ask yourself, is having Tank Dell, I mean, Tank Dell is healthy for the first one, but is having Tank Dell back and then adding Stephon Diggs and Joe Mixon, his whatever his upgrade is over uh, Devin Singletary, is that enough to overcome the gap there worse the Ravens? Because it wasn't a small gap between them and the Ravens last year. I know first halves of those games were fairly close, but in the end, it was a massive difference between the two teams. Yeah, it's hard Especially for me to... in Baltimore. Yeah, that one was massive. The, the week one game didn't matter to me. Like, that's C.J. Stroud, his first just, ever NFL yeah. game. That, that, to me, you're throwing that one out. And they actually hung around defensively in the first half it was like what a one possession game two point it was seven six a half half. point game it was seven six yeah so i don't i don't put much weight in the week one now playoffs you have to put a lot of weight in like i'll concede you have to put a lot of weight on on that one but you also look at the additions and what you think of the uh, the development for the houston texans Uh, i think it's high i i have them in contendership uh for a super bowl uh certainly you have to be the man in order to be the man you got to beat the man that's kansas city uh, kansas city oh! back-to-back champions there you go a little rick flair uh or reddick if you want to go the reddick route uh, i have the texans right there though uh, i i don't mind them being third super bowl odds i, I do feel like they're short change in baltimore though i probably have them below soon? baltimore no i don't think so did, did ravens the, the third, ravens lose, lose both their guards I have no idea. On the line, I think they lost both their guards, and obviously with a run-heavy team that relied on an offensive line, they got to replace those guys. But, yeah, I mean, look, they they have an extra weapon now with Lamar if Henry's got anything left in the tank, so... B. Hannon says third in the AFC. He says that on the Twitch, twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. Uh, I'm sure he's probably saying Kansas City, Baltimore, Houston. I would think so. Ahead of Cincinnati, so. ahead of Buffalo. So. Yeah, I would see. I think I'd still put Cincinnati ahead of Houston. I think people have completely forgotten what Joe Burrow was before Joe Burrow got hurt. Yeah, I think he's very similar to Stroud. Stroud's more. A but a lot more of people athletic. are going to tell you that they beat the Joe Burrowed Bengals last year. Fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're throwing out Baltimore beat the Texans in the playoffs, why couldn't the Texan fans say that? Well, the Texans beat oh, Cincinnati in Cincinnati. It, it is fair. It's it va- is absolutely fair. valid. And it Burrow is fair. was Burrow was healthy, like like Blankers mentioned. Like he was still playing and they had all their guys i know burrow Burrow is just done though what we are hoping the Texans can go do he's gone to buffalo and won in a snowstorm he's gone into kansas city and won a playoff game Uh, i i I think there's been maybe some recency bias of not seeing joe burrow and his weapons at full strength that has maybe made people forget how good the Bengals were uh, just a couple years ago 713-780 espn are the Texans in that contendership status for you? 713-780-3776. Also, where, where do they rank offensively in the NFL? Uh, where do you have them? I think that they could flirt with being in the top five. I think the lowest bar is top ten. What do you think? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Hey, before we go to the break, a word from mybookie.ag. Hey, it's the best sports book that I know of. Uh, that you can go to and place all the wagers while they take care of you basically every step of the way. It's a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and your casino needs if you're looking for that live casino experience without getting in your car and driving or getting in a, on a plane and flying to a casino somewhere. They are fantastic. And now you can take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the mybookie.ag website. You can sign up right now at mybookie.ag using our promo code BET975 and get a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit, all the way up to $1,000. For instance, you put $200 in, you automatically get $300 in your account, ready to play using that promo code BET975. Fun doesn't stop there. When you're on the website, you'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who you want to put your money on. And even when those games aren't going on, There's always those live dealers standing by with the casino games like poker and blackjack, too. Best part about my bookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere, using that that always critical promo code BET975. Secure your welcome bonus today only with my bookie.
Coming to you live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Killer Bees. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank on Branham. Contendership. Are the Texans there? 713-780-3776. Let's go out to the HRMP listener line. Andy, you're in the high with the Bees. What's up, Andy? Yeah, the Texans are the new Astros. Okay. Three years. And now they, they, they knocked on the door last year, and now with all the new moves, they'll be contenders for a long time. Okay. There we go. Appreciate the I call, mean, Andy. Just think, well, yeah, just think about it. You, you don't have to extend uh, – they'll probably extend Will and uh, CJ on the fourth year. But by then, you've got all kinds of money coming off. I mean, tons of money. Mason will be gone. Howard will be gone. Tons will be gone. Diggs will be gone. I mean, there's, there's all kind of money to be gone. Man. And that's going to be Nick's deal the next uh, – Andy, let me, let me ask you a question, years. Andy. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You have the Texans winning two Super Bowls in the next seven years. I got them going two, two, at least. Well, they got to win two if they're, the, if they're the new Astros. They got to win two. Well, you know what? Hell, let's say it. Let's do it. Put that yeah. down. Put that down. Yeah. But, but let, me, let me ask you. I mean, look at what they've done. And he's not done yet. I mean, he's either going to extend Nico. Yeah. Or he's going to get a defensive tackle yeah. before, the, before the draft comes. Love but it. I, I, keep. I, I just hope finally people will stop getting on Nick's butt. I'm with this you. Whole thing about, well, this whole thing about, oh, uh, uh, D'Amico made Nico go get CJ. No, I think they both got together and they figured out, hey, this guy can play. This is the guy we want. Love the call, Andy. I love the fire. Andy said we're going to Jacksonville. We're going to Tennessee. We're going to Indianapolis. We're going to Kansas City. We're going to Buffalo. We're going to Baltimore. We're going to take over the NFL. Sold down, Howard Dean. <laughs> Does that mean they're also going to four Super Bowls and winning two of them? That's right. Okay. That's we're in. Said. It's football time in Houston. And the fire Texans the are ready Walker. to play. Ooh. Texans are ready to play. I don't suggest that a- a- Andy listen to that last read that I did going into break. Because it could be costly for him if he wants to bet when the on Texas, that. When the Texans make the Super Bowl, can we get Clay Walkerson in the national anthem? As long as you Let's drive that thing smooth. Mo- <laughs> why? Why are you so anti hot takes? Why can't Why can't Andy have his moment? Two Super Bowls next seven years. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anti? I just wouldn't bet on it. Okay. I wouldn't put a lot of money on it. I got you. It sounds anti. Okay, great. Sounds a little anti. A little wet blanker on Ooh, that idea. That's a little bit idea. Wet blanket. Yes. A little little wet blanker on the idea a little bit. Write that down as a wheel a bit. Seven one three seven eight zero ESP and HRP listener. Like I, I two Super Bowls seven years, I, I don't know. Um hopefully that'd be a lot of fun. It'd be awesome. I do agree the arrow's pointing up on this mm-hmm, organization. For like sure. I think that this is a perennial playoff team and a perennial Super Bowl contender as long as you have D'Amico and Stroud. So I, I do believe that. I'm not too far off where Andy's at. Oh, and I think Andy needs to he, – he forgets quickly, and that's fine. But before the, the CJ draft, there was a lot of people, including myself, that were watching Nick Casario closely because there were a lot of moves that you could easily question. But now they're in a position where – and what he's done this year has made everybody kind of change their stance and or look at it differently, and I'm happy about that. Now, there's you know a couple factors that go into a run this long, and obviously health is first and foremost. But when you look at it, this is we've had this we had discussion a few weeks ago, but when you think about the greatest free agent acquisition this team has had prior to this, yeah, there was a couple, but you're you're not really going wow wow wow. This whole off season has been a wow. Uh, I mean, when they when they brought in John Weeks, it was a wow for me, future Ring of Honor member, mm-hmm. uh, John Weeks. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRMP listener line. Former Rain says, um, what did he say here? Let me find it. Uh, Diggs is a cancer, and they will regret this. Maybe a bit strong, but Buffalo is probably saying that. Bills fans are probably saying that today. I I, th- I do think it's worth the, worth worth the conversation. Let's assume Diggs has the same issues he had with Buffalo. He's just perennially, perennially unhappy. He just does, you know, he's disgruntled all the time. What's the worst thing that can happen? Like you cut him, you, cut and you lose a second round yeah. pick. Like that's not a huge risk. The reward here, and there's risk with Stefan Diggs. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, poor Marines points a good one. Uh, Paul was talking about it on his show. Uh, we went, we mentioned the numbers in his final seven regular season games. Some people might call it risk. Some people were saying it's it's fine. Um, 
I think it's fair to call it risk, and there is some risk there. But the reward outweighs the risk by 10 times, in my opinion, mm-hmm. that this is an easy trade for Nick Casario. You look at it, and it's the potential return on investment that makes this so exciting for so many people. And when I was thinking about it this morning, I was thinking, well, if it's going to be a volatile situation, it's a Brandon Cooks-like situation. But guess what? I think Diggs has more in the tank, is still more talented than whatever Brandon Cooks had at that point that he was a Texan. And I think on top of that, You obviously have a quarterback in C.J. Stroud that I think is better than what you had no matter when it was and who was quarterbacking the Houston Texans to where, and and if you add to all that, the fact that they have weapons all across the board right now and Diggs sees this as a potential special opportunity for the next year or two to try and really do what Andy thinks they're going to do to where I think at least for the next year or two, I I think he's going to mind his P's and Q's. I don't think he's going to be an issue. Now, as a diva wide receiver, if he doesn't get the ball, is there going to be times when he acts up? Probably. Yeah, I'm curious to see. My kitchen is dirty on the Twitch. If my quarterback constantly bad word the bed in the playoffs, I'd be disgruntled too. It's a good point there. My kitchen is dirty. Uh, 713-780-3776. Back out to the HRMP listener line. Matt, you're in the hive with the bees. What's going on, Matt? Hey, what's going on, guys? So I have a question for you guys. So if it was, if you had to pick, you know, the one star star offensive player that they're going to get, do you think? Or would you have picked Diggs? Or if there was like a picture, hey, we got to get one. If it was Diggs, Barkley, or Henry, which one of the three would you win with? Okay. Uh, Diggs, Barkley, Henry. Now, uh, this well, to you, me is apples to oranges. Yeah, you got Mixon in the mix. Obviously, you have, Mixon has to at least be a possibility, right? Because they traded for him. Well, I think he's saying if you had one move to make that's kind of your big move offensively, which of the three would you like the most? Like going I mean, back to where you were in February, yeah, like I if mean, you're trying to plan it out. The Texans told you plan A at running back with Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. Like they were they were negotiating with Barkley and they got beat out by Philadelphia. They themselves have told you, according to reports from Aaron Wilson, 99% of the time it's true, um, that they wanted Saquon Barkley. Yep. They they finished second. They were the bridesmaid to Saquon Barkley and they went with plan B, plan B Joe Mixon. So they prioritized Barkley to a certain cost higher than they prioritize Joe Mixon. So I think that's where he's coming from there. So I think that if you think that and take that logic into a consideration, then it's would you have rather had Saquon Barkley or would you rather had a combination of Mixon and Diggs? I would take the combination of Mixon and Diggs and I would let Saquon mm, blow I mean, you're kind Barkley. of repurposing the question. Like he's saying you get one swing at a key offensive player, which one would you want the most? I mean, I, I, I would... Uh, well, I, I think, but they ended up with it. They still ended up with a, a, a running back that I'm pleased with, and they didn't have to spend the money on Saquon. You're right. They were targeting Saquon. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, but you could have gotten like Saquon and Hunter Renfro. Like, you don't know the collateral move. Like, you get your one prize of those three. Who is the one prize that you would want the most? Well, and I think that Saquon is the easy choice because of his age and because he's in his prime and, and because whether it's injuries or otherwise, I think he's got plenty left that Saquon would be the the choice. I don't think I think Derrick Henry's out of this conversation for me. Um but I like what they've done. I, I love the combination of everything that they all the guys they brought in. The um I'd probably go Saquon. See, I see I, I, I would I would go with Diggs. I mean, I get that obviously Saquon would be maybe their most talented running back since Arian Foster, but I, I just see the running back production, especially coming off a year where you paid $5 million to Singletary and he was good enough. I just see the running back production as being more easily replaced than something that Stefan Diggs could bring to the table. And I think your upside as an offense is uh, higher with uh, a dynamic wide receiver, potentially like Diggs, and what that does compared, you know, paired with Nico and Tank than a running back does. Would you rather have Keenan Allen or Stefan Diggs? Diggs. Diggs. I'll go Allen there. I, I feel Allen's... Allen's- I think look, he's he's, I think he's great longer last year, than but he's he's safer. He's, hasn't he been dinged up? He, uh, he did have a great he missed year last the la- He missed the last like three, four games last year, and then he missed like seven games the year before that. So yeah, he's he's. I think he's a year older, and he's had more injury problems. I would still go Diggs. I think he's safer though. I when he's on the field. Well, I'm talking, talking about you never heard. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, the theme of the day. Like we've never we've never heard of Keenan Allen ever. That's, that's having a dispute with fair. his team mm-hmm. or being disgruntled. Uh, very good professional, all of those things. Uh, Allen, at times, can be a bit di- dinged up. Missed four games this year, missed seven games last year. They're about the same age, though. Uh, Allen's one year older than Dix. Okay. I, 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 I definitely think the safer move is Allen. I think I would I trust that Diggs has a little bit more left in the tank. I and don't know. And that's why I would go me. with Diggs because I think you could get two years of the Allen was also Allen was also cheaper because he cost a fourth. Now you got beat out, 
you didn't you didn't right. win it, yeah, so maybe it cost you more than a fourth. Maybe it's a fourth and sweeteners. So you could have had Allen for fourth and sweeteners or Diggs for a second. Yeah, if I'd probably you, go Allen, to if, be honest. If you're just factoring in well, the likelihood of when a drop-off is going to happen, Allen being a year older, you would expect it to happen for him first, and so I'll take two years, hypothetically, of Diggs versus potentially just one of Allen. Yeah. Eh. 713-780-3776. I think it's a good question. Now, I'm not unhappy. Let, let's be very clear. I'm totally cool with what the Texans did. I love the idea. Did Allen get two he years in Chicago? Uh, I didn't see the terms on the extension. You yeah. Google on that computer? Yeah. Okay. You, boy, I, you're just loading up late. Um, <laughs> uh, it was just because we were in the heat of a conversation. Uh, I, I Look, I, I you got digs under contract, too, and you can get out of it if you need to, but I think it's, it's affordable still at what he signed for. I, I don't mind the fact that at least it's not where he was kind of, you know, shaking, shaking. He got two year extension with a restructured twenty four. Okay. So we we don't know what uh, an extension for Diggs will look like. I expect Diggs to get an extension though. Uh, I prefer Allen, but but barely. Like I, I'm not. Like, oh, they should have got – I'm not going to lose my mind over it. Uh, I'm really happy with Stephon Diggs. I think this offense is going to take off and be very, very good. So, it's just uh, throwing it out there for a good little conversation. Now, the Texans, I think, assuming health, will have to cut a wide receiver because I, I don't I, think that you're going into next season with seven guys on your 53-man roster. You Currently right now, and I'm not, carding, I'm not counting Steven Mims because he's kind of a right, practice squad specialist, specialist guy. Diggs, Nico, Tank, Woods, Brown, Mechie, Hutchinson. That's seven. One's got to go, assuming health, because one guy can get hurt in camp and you can put him on pup and, and keep all of the guys. But assuming health, they all get through camp healthy, assuming they're all with the team during camp. Who's the guy that you're getting rid of? Man, um, I, I think it's Woods. I think because it's just, it, it, you know, he goes away. The five million may factor in. But I would understand if it's one of the young guys, because if you're in true go for it mode, you got a guy that's an experienced NFL wide receiver. That's like you said, if, if it's an injury you know that he's a guy capable of still stepping in. I don't know to what level he's got left in the tank, but I believe Woods is the odd man out. I think Woods is going to go. Yeah. Uh, I would cut as soon as I make this trade official, I would cut Woods. Hey, we talk about like certain positions that you can get better at. Like Maybe you can't find a starting left guard for $5 million, but maybe you can find a guy who can at least compete with Kenyon Green. Uh, I think you can play the safety game a little bit with whoever's left out at the position. Save the $5 million from Robert Woods and go find, even if it's not a starting safety, maybe a third safety that can push Jimmy Ward or gives you better insurance in case Jimmy Ward goes, goes down. Yeah, uh, I think that $5 million is I important would, right now. As soon as this trade's official, I'm cutting Robert Woods using that $5 million elsewhere. I, I just, man, I didn't see anything that from Xavier Hutchinson to me that says I want him on the field. Yeah. I mean, and and really, we didn't. I didn't see it from Mechie either, but the draft capital spent on Mechie, I think, is going to give buy him the tiebreaker, if not even more than that. So, yeah, look, I mean, you had an, you had injury problems last year with no, no Brown got hurt. Obviously, Tank Dale got hurt. Nico missed a couple games. I'd rather have the guy in Robert Woods, uh, despite the, the the difference in the cost, that I have good, better feelings about being able to step in and actually give me some production. Because as you guys said, I mean, this is a team clearly in win-now mode. I mean, Stefan Diggs is, what, 30, 31 years old. Uh, Joe Mixon is, I think, 20. he'll be 28 when the season starts. They're in win-now mode. I don't have time to wait for Hutchinson to develop. I, I'd, I'd rather have Robert Woods. The other thing with Hutchinson is that, you know, you could practice squad him, and he has the best chance sure. of landing on the practice squad. Of course, oh. to practice squad a guy, you got to clear waivers, and then once you're on the practice squad, any team in the NFL could sign that guy if they put him on into 53. You're not going to do that with somebody you love, but maybe you do it with someone that you like but don't love. And maybe they're at like with Hutchinson but not love with Hutchinson, and they try to go that route to try to sneak them onto the practice squad, uh, but also knowing the risk that somebody else could pick them up. Yeah, I think they're intrigued by his his physical traits. I think the detriment would be there's questions about his hands. But you're right. I think there's a guy that could slide through waivers and you could put on your practice squad and, and you can hide him. But – I, I agree with you, BMAC. I, I can understand. I think Woods is going to go, but I can totally understand if you're in true go-for-it mode, you've got a NFL-proven wide receiver still on your roster that can help you if there's an injury. 713-780-ESPN. Are the Texans a contender after today's move? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. Guys, right now I want to tell you about Allstate Siding and Windows because if you're looking for windows at an affordable price, there's only one place to go. I just did this. I went to Allstate 
and I got the greatest windows. They upgrade the overall appearance of your house immediately, and I mean the curb appeal is awesome. But then when you start factoring in the fact that you could save up to 40% on your energy bills, and they're going to protect you and keep the elements away from your house like hurricane season while keeping the cooling in the summer and the warmth in the, in the winter, this is a no-brainer. And they are the best in the business because they've been in Houston for almost – 50 years they take care of you because they care about houstonians and they always got deals going on right now 30 percent off on windows 2500 dollars off a complete siding job too if you want to do the actual double whammy and get the siding and the windows to really hyper protect your house free estimates are always available family run for four generations mary handles everything back at the headquarters mike her brother gets out there talks to you tells you exactly how they can help and what you basically need to do all it takes to start the process call them 832-204-1936 832-204-1936 or get them online at allstate siding and windows.com You're back with the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank. I am uh, Branham. Uh, 4958, having all 54 windows in our house done by Allstate right now. Great people and great service. Mary and Jimmy are awesome. Two exclamation points. 
uh, St. Patrick. That's cool to hear. That's oh, awesome. Great. They're really great people. That's uh, Shop ESPN 97.5. I bet you that's not Nick Casario texting in. 54 windows, the Casario house, doubtful. I don't believe that at all. Oh, uh, that's a lot. It's a lot of windows. It's a excessive amount it's of windows. It's a low-key flex. Yeah, no, not even low a low-key key. flex. How many windows do you have in your house? Hmm, maybe three up front? I would say I'm doing the, the math in my head. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I think including, I've got... You have to include, like, the windows around the front door. Some, if you have those, no. or, like, mini wi- half I windows. I wouldn't count those. 12, you do have to. I'm just 13. telling you oh, from you experience 14. if you want them replaced. I have 14. Uh, I was going to say definitely less than 30. 14 windows. I know I've got – I'm doing the math in my head. I've got four across the front, two down – Uh, yeah, two, one on each side, and then four across the back, so that'd be um, that'd be 12. I think I have 14. How many windows do you have in your home? 713 does it definitely feels like a flex. 54. Oh, I got 54. less than 30. 54. I got he's got, less than 30 he's got 54 sure. windows. I bet you his home is a couple million dollars. I don't. Two not, million not, dollars. Not, not, not in Houston. I mean, if he needs – 54 windows? Yeah. Because I'm telling if you, it's those, in, if it's inside the loop, it's, it's little, two million. Those little fan-shaped windows above the door, or those count? Oh, they do. Yeah. If he if he lives inside the loop with 54 windows, he's inside got a two million different. dollar home. Yeah, the suburbs are a little bit more yeah. affordable. I'll yeah. give you that. Um, how many windows have you broken on the golf course? Uh, zero. <laughs> zero? What well, a rookie! I mean, I've broken at least a dozen. Yeah. If, at if least he, a dozen. If he has windows broken and he's replaced them, I mean, I, you should probably call all state siding windows. But, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. no he did. He yeah, did. he did, I, evidently, and uh, they're <laughs> glad he did. He says <laughs> I was shocked. Four windows later. He says I was shocked. Trust me, didn't seem like that many. Not an intentional flex. It was an accidental flex. Uh, the, the window that I broke that was the hardest one to break, part three, hole number one, April Sound, uh, there was a house. It's like a like a two-and-a-half-story house, and the top, like, half-story had a triangular window that was probably three feet, you know, wide at the base and probably about three feet tall. That's it. Million-to-one shot. Million-to-one shot. I uh, I got it off the hosel. I shanked it right into that second-and-a-half-story window. Shifted by the window? Um, I did not because if you're a golf – if you're an owner that lives on a golf course, sure. you assume the risk. Mm. You assume I've seen, the risk. Now, I've seen whether that's clearly stated everywhere or not. I've seen homeowners go after golfers. Oh, they'll go after them, sure. Yeah, and try and track them down and then try and hold them accountable. And yeah, I, w- I would definitely say that's – you know, it's at your own risk at that point. If you buy mm-hmm. the home with it backing up to the golf by, course, that, well, that would law. feel like that would be in the fine print of the of the oh, HOA contract. By law. That's a, that's a law, Okay, I, I think. Okay. Uh, I certainly act that way whenever I do it. And, but you're right. Homeowners <laughs> will come at you bad. Oh, man. But, hey, I'm sorry. You take on the risk. I always, that's my, that's smartest been, thing the homeowner can do is get some time. of that netting. Now, I have broken a window with a golf ball away from a golf course. Just practice. We were, or yeah, it was a little bit of a game. And we were chipping into the uh, jacuzzi and I got one over many, the fence and into a side window. Uh, no comment. 713 780 3776. Keith on the line wants to tell us how many windows he has. Uh, let's go out to the HRP listener line for Keith. Keith, how many windows do you have? Hey, guys, two-story house. I did the hard math. Uh, <laughs> hard I've got math. 38 total windows. It's a flex. 38. It's a flex there, Keith. How much is your house it's appraised for, you think? A light flex. Just a light flex. Just 38, though. <laughs> appreciate it. Keith's 38 windows, though, in the 1990s. The uh, appreciate the call, Keith. How many windows does Nick Casario have? Uh, he doesn't believe 54. in windows. He has none. Nick Casario, exactly. he, doesn't he doesn't know what a window is. Oh, well, he lives in his office. I get what you're saying. But I think his no, family... No, no, it's not what we're saying. He, remember, he said he doesn't know what a window is. Oh, that's right. He doesn't know what a window is. He has zero windows in his house. So when he calls the Allstate signing of windows, how long back and forth does he have to go with the sales rep before he finally gets them to say, I need this many windows replaced? I, I have... need those clear things that may <laughs> allow me to <laughs> see outside from the house. not say the word window. <laughs> I have 52 increments <laughs> that I need fixed. Increments of space filled with glass. <laughs> <laughs> glass increments that are usually rectangular uh 8268 texans are absolutely contenders they have the best offensive lineup of playmakers in the league nobody's better than the lineup of stroud Diggs, collins tank Mixon, schultz now nick can focus on mostly defensive draft picks i am curious to see how they handle the draft now uh i like that they can go best player available i, I wouldn't hate if they go offense especially at left guard from a skill position point of view they're up there philly philly's really good with aj brown Saquon. Um, Devontae, AJ. Had Saquon got. Yeah. I think the Texans have the advantage of quarterback, but skill position, right. yes. And I also think third receiver matters, right? Sure, sure. Um, San Francisco, I would, I would obviously. Give, I would give the Eagles the slight edge, I think. 
uh, barely over the Texans. San Francisco, yes. Because you throw Kittle in the middle. Yeah, you oh, throw right. Kittle That's in the middle. That's really mix. good. Uh, both of Miami, those are NFC McCaffrey. teams. I wouldn't go Miami. I wouldn't. Miami's, are, Miami's are really H, good up top. Nate Chan was dynamic yeah, last year. Yeah, he was. Mo- most are, what, like top five in the league in rushing? Well, he was like, he was like, like 18. That? I think he had he 18 hurt, rushing touchdowns last year. He got two good backs. He got yeah. two really, Maybe really that's good wide receivers. I think you're right. You get the advantage of the quarterback to the Texans. Sure, but he's going just straight skill. Miami's up there. Mm-hmm. Miami's up there. Um, Buffalo, no. New England, no. Jets. Jets are low key pretty good. They yeah, pretty good. Garrett Wilson, Wilson. Brees Hall. Yeah, yeah to Mike they Williams. In Mike Williams. Yeah. That's not bad. Uh, nobody in the division. Colts, uh, no. Jags, no. Titans, no. Seattle, low key. You got DK, uh, the, the Kenneth Walker. Yeah. They you drafted Charbonnet uh, last year. You drafted Charbonnet. You still have uh, JSN. That's right. Uh, it was a rookie last year. They, they kept uh, Tyler Lockett still. Let's see. Vegas with Devontae. They lost their running back. No. Nah. Broncos, definitely not. Chargers traded all their receivers away. Um, Chiefs, no. no. Chiefs don't Dallas have the weapons. Dallas doesn't have a running game. Yeah, I was going, I was going more AFC. Oh. And then what's the other division? Baltimore, Odell is gone. They brought in Henry Bateman. You have Quentin Flowers. That's pretty good. They have Mark Andrews. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. Cincinnati has Chase. Yeah, Henry in the backfield helps them immensely. As of now, they have Higgins, mm-hmm. which helps them. Their running back play they, maybe dropped off a little bit with the yeah, team of Nixon, but they were yeah. glad. You don't to do know that. who their running back is. Higgins is probably not going to be there. I, w- I would put them a, a step below. Browns and Joku, Chubb, Hurt, Buffalo, no. Amari. Um, mentioned Buffalo uh, when I went through the East. Um, who's Cleveland's second? They brought Judy. in a second receiver. That's Judy. Right, Judy. They trade. Yeah. I don't love Judy though. Uh, no, Texans Pittsburgh. have a better second wide receiver so than Judy. Judy. Cooper. Pittsburgh traded Johnson. They yeah, no, but not Pittsburgh. They, yeah, they traded They're Deontay Johnson. Najee's all right. Samuels is all right. Yeah, Steelers know though. They're lying. Yeah, because Texans are top two in the AFC. Uh huh. Skill position. Yeah. The Lions are pretty good in the NFC. Yeah. So, Tex- I mean, uh, Texans are top two in the AFC. I think so. In the NFL, are they top five? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think they're probably fifth. Yeah. Lions are up there with Gibbs, with LaPorta, with Jason 49ers. Williams, with Amon Ra. 49ers are up there. Eagles, Eagles are up there. Dallas, eh. No. They have no, they they no they've running got nothing game to right running now. Back. And who's their second receiver? Giants, no. Commanders, no. Uh, Bears. Cowboys second receiver is Brandon Cooks. Bears are Bears underrated. Are pretty good. Bears are sneaky. Komet at tight end is pretty good. Yeah. Bears are sneaky. Green Bay? Boy, if those young receivers, they got good young receivers. I love Jaden Reed. They got, Me too. And they got Jacobs, and they got two young tight ends. Green Bay ends. sneaky. Yeah, Green Bay too. Is sneaky in the top That's ten. That's probably at least. top yeah. seven ish. Yeah. Who's the other team in that division? Bears. Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota. They, I mean, they have one guy. Yeah, they, eh, they just have one guy. That's it. Yeah. Well, no, uh, uh, Addison too, right? Yeah, oh Addison yeah, really Addison. Good. Was, good point. He had like yeah. ten receiving touchdowns last good year. Good point. Tampa and no. they got Hawkinson. Yeah, he's hurt, though. He's hurt. I don't know how long he'll be yeah, out. I don't Maybe know, half but if he's year. there, those three guys are pretty good. The running game Falcons, is suspect. Falcons could get there with Bijan and Drake London. They added uh, they added Mooney. Pitts. Uh, Kyle Pitts, yeah. That's not bad. Um, Tampa, no. Saints? No. Nah, Kamara's a little old. I like Olave, but no. Uh, who's the fourth? Panthers, no. Uh-uh. Arizona? Panthers out of it. Arizona, if you go to the West, with San Francisco, yes. Arizona, no. I mean, they lost Hollywood. They have Connor. Uh, I don't like the receiver. Yeah, uh, we have now, we now. haven't said the Rams there, right? Obviously, they bring back Puka. Oh, and Puka Ky- yeah. Kyron Williams was great for them. And Cooper w- Cup still there? We'll yep. see what. Yeah, we'll see what Cooper Cup has left. Top ten, top I ten think, there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would say they're top ten. Tight end, I forget what he was pretty good. Uh, yeah, they're gonna go with the young guy this year. I can't remember his name. I've been yeah, they got rid of Tyler Higby, right? They got, did they I think he's still on the roster actually, but didn't he get hurt? They got rid of Higby. Maybe not. Still there. Yeah, I've been drafting. Yeah, Higby's not gonna be their starter though. I think that young kid's gonna be their starter. That was there last year. Kind of came on at the end. Seven one three seven eight zero ESP. Everybody's sending us how many windows they have. That was my bad. I kind of took us down that wormhole. Uh, why not trade Woods post draft to a team that wants depth? I don't know how much trade value Robert Who Woods has. Like, you're not getting much for Robert Woods. Like maybe you can get a seventh or a pick swap. Like you're trying to get rid of the contract anyways. If someone just wants to beat the waiver wire lineup and just thinks they got they, that that's a guy they want yeah maybe you go a late 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 pick but you're not getting much for him who plays slot digs or tank uh i think tank does i think it's going to be mix matched I, I don't think that Slowick really believes in inside outside receivers i believe he likes using receivers wherever kind of like san francisco does uh seven one three seven eight zero esp what's your car wreck of the day what are you nominating for our car wreck of the day 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5.
Human Resources and Payroll. They're the name you need to know. HR&P, as we know them. Cougar owned by my colleague, Go Cougs. He used to protect the Heisman Trophy winner. Now he's protecting your businesses. Business owners, let HR&P help you. They can help you in HR compliance, benefits administration, payroll, onboarding. HR&P can help in any of those areas, all of those areas, one of those areas. It doesn't matter. Whatever you need help with, HRP will help you. They'll create a plan for whatever you need. No boxes with HRP. You're not ordering off a menu. Doesn't matter how small the job, how big the job, HRP will completely customize a plan for whatever your business needs. If you have a problem, you have an issue, you want somebody to handle your books, you want somebody to handle your payroll, they can do it all. You want to take a little off your plate, HRP will find a way to help. Take a lot off your plate, HRP will find a way to help. They do it in a way that's unique, too. Technology meets service. They have the best technology. You'll love that, but you'll also love their service. Guaranteed fulfillment. You'll never talk to a stranger. You'll always be talking to someone who knows you and knows your business needs. Give them a call at 281-880-6525 and let HRP customize a plan for you. 281-880-6525 or check them out online at hrp.net. That's hrp.net. This is Ron Insano with your market scoreboard report on ESPN 97.5. Choppy day on Wall Street that closed mixed with the Dow losing ground with the S&P and NASDAQ rebounding after yesterday's slide. That after Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell still left the door open for interest rate reductions this year, saying though that the fight against inflation was not yet done. That took the yield in the 10-year note from 4.4% down to 435 and also helped the NASDAQ and the S&P move higher. Still, with weakness in Intel and Disney, the Dow lost 43 points to 39,127 off the lows of the day and off the highs as well. S&P up 568 to 52.11. NASDAQ up 37 points to 16,277. Oil prices came off the lows and the highs of the day, but finished with a 41 cent gain to 85.56 a barrel. New high for gold again today, up 36 bucks to 23.17 the ounce as the market digested stronger than expected payroll growth reported by ADP in the private sector, looking ahead to Friday's release of unemployment data and again digesting Jay Powell's comments on the future direction of interest rates, the strength of the economy, and inflation. You found the killer bees. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. This is Christian Javier's music. We haven't been doing this this season. I think it's the reason the Astros are 1-5, in five, quite frankly. We haven't done our part by playing the starters' music. Now that the starters' music's being played, 
I smell a winning streak. I mean, the Astros starting pitchers were already had a dominant ERA. I mean, yep. could they even level up from where they've been now that we're playing the music? No, but the rest of the team can. Consistency, oh, okay. too. Keep it going. Not just a one-and-done type thing. I mean, we got – and we have some songs we have to pick out for some pitchers. Yeah. I don't know who – like, Verlander has a song. Fromber does. Uh, J.P. Ver, France does. I remember does. Verlander's it, – vaguely, it was – This uh, is Ace of Spades. There you go. Um, we need one for Blanco. Yeah, Blanco doesn't have one. Mm -mm. Do we have one for J.P. France? We used um, – what's the one we used for him? We used the No, we used one for him. It's the uh, it's that one that's the commercial for that hotel. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I can't think. It's on the top. It's right on the tip of my tongue. I'm a – I'm a like I've been traveling man or whatever. Oh, Was I've been with, everywhere? I've been everywhere, Okay, man. okay. Yeah, that's the one that we used for J.P. The France. The Johnny Cash one? Okay. Because he's been uh, everywhere. He's been everywhere. So, yeah, uh, that's the one we use for him. But we can, that's, a, so that's open. The one we need to come up that. with is Renault Blanco. Blanco for sure. Do we, we do we do something with a uh, song with uh, or a band with white in it for Blanco? <laughs> something I'm by a, the White Stripes? Song? I'm a fan of the Spanish music for the Latino pitchers. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Blankers, I don't think, likes that a whole lot. No, I don't mind it. That's a good song right here. <laughs> Yeah, I do. So Javier on the mound today for the Houston Astros. Chris Bassett. Hopefully Javier looks like he'd look like last start. That would be a great, great quality thing start from Javier tonight for the Astros. Sure, <laughs> why not? I think so. Why not? I like the way he looked last game. He goes up against Chris Bassett tonight. All right, let's get to our car wreck of the day. Go from Suavemente to this. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? My leg is broken. The ball's oh, coming see. through. Let me see. Let me see. Ah, let me get you you brick. Where's my <laughs> money? This is the car wreck of the day. I always feel like I'm in New York whenever I hear that. All right, what's your nominee for car wreck of the day, Blinkers? Well, the easy first one is what we started the program off, or at least after the digs chalk, and that is the Stroh's base run. Stroh's base running, Jose Altuve, Jake Myers. Not good last night. Instead of the... You know, Renault Blanca throws the cambia, the changeup. It should be something from the cumbia kings. Oh. Just saying. Okay. Just saying. Uh, base running, absolutely. That was one Four. that I had on my list, too. Myers falling straight on his face. Mm. Altuve running into a baseball. Feels like Altuve is <laughs> going to be the favorite to win this today. Altuve trying to score on a, he thought, wild pitch. The that catcher wasn't. picked up on one hop, got back picked. That was terrible. Awful. I got a good one for Blanco. What's that? Uh, Cheryl Crow's change will do you good. See, I told you he didn't like the, the Latin. How, 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 do how does that fit for Blanco? Because the now change up. the change does uh, him good. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. The change up. I'm going to nominate the bird flu. I saw this on... Uh, Is it back? I can't remember where I saw this. Is it a thing? It's first time I've heard here, of right? it. It's here, right? Oh, no, bird, bird, yeah. bird flu was a thing people were scared about like five, six, seven years oh, ago. No, it's, back. it's back. It's back, okay. The U.S. egg supplier had to halt production after a chicken tested positive. This oh, isn't God. Texas farm. Yes, it is, yep. I'm like, what kind of test are they giving these chickens? Are you sticking a little thing up its nose to see if it's testing positive I, for the bird flu? How do probably, you find out? They probably just know. draw blood, right? Do, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, do they I'm, test I'm a certain a amount of doctor, eggs when they hatch? I, don't, I, mean, I mean, when they're out? That's what I re actually read this article because I was like, how did they find out this chicken has the flu? Didn't say. How does a chicken get the flu? 713-780-3776. Got it when he crossed the road. But they don't okay, get oh, awful. Boy. Grade the joke. 713-780-3776. You're running out of time, luckily. 1.4 for me. Yeah, it's a bad one. I'll Probably 0. 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8. <laughs> what are you nominating for car wreck of the day, Brian? Uh, I'm going to nominate the Bills for having to give out a non-quarterback record amount of dead money <laughs> trading uh, Stephon Diggs just, what, a year after they extended him? Uh, they would have been better off just never extending them and letting them go. Instead, they're going to have to eat $31 million of their dead cap. So I, I, th I thank them for that, but uh, car record that they nominate. No doubt. Uh, 1856, can we just nominate the Cowboys offseason every day? Definitely a car wreck. Cowboy fans are unhappy it with the offseason. It hasn't been good for an owner that, and general manager that says they're in go for it mode. He said they're all in, which yeah. got Skip Bayless dangerously close to having some uh, a questionable t uh, tweet sent out. You're all in and so. all your free agencies so far, all your free agents have been all out. 685600 on the joke. Yeah, it was bad. I'll admit it. Didn't even move the needle at all. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, it was bad. Zero, zero. Uh, 8835 nominates Josh Hader for the car wreck of the day. 
Yeah. yeah See, I get it. That's he was slider. so good in the opener, but it, ever since then. I saw everybody talking about it, the velo of his sinker is not where it was, and maybe that's true. His sinker's not gotten him into trouble, though. No. I mean, he was actually He's got the double play on the sinker, sinker yesterday. Sinker velocity doesn't matter if you hang a slider in the no. middle of the plate. Middle, middle, right down the... Someone told me that when he was traded from Milwaukee to, to San Diego, he got off to a rocky start, too, and then settled in. Let's hope so. He didn't get traded to Colorado. Trade the joke, 713-780-3776. Rocky start. There you oh go. My God. You got zero, another one? 0.0. 0. <laughs> I think it's at least better than yours. All right, 0. It wasn't 1. good. 0. 0.1. It wasn't a good joke. Congratulations, you beat mine. But I do think it, we get a little delirious late in the show. Mm -hmm. You have another car wreck, Mike? I don't. All right. I have uh, Alex Murdoch. Did you see this? Actually, I think it's pronounced Alex Murdoch. Oh, yeah, the guy uh, the, the guy that the killed his wife guy. or his wife and kid. Yeah, it was both. Yes, both things are true. Um, he spells his name M-U-R-D-A-U-H. He spells his name Murdoch. A -U it's it's Murdoch. Huh. <laughs> you got pretty, it? That thank was you. actually pretty good. Okay, thank you. I can retire but, now. But it's pronounced Murdoch. Yeah. I don't know where he gets yeah. the CK there. I have no idea. Well, that's like your guard from Texas. I don't know how in the hell they get the pronunciation of his name. Oh, yeah, Max Asmus. Yeah. And it's spelled with a B? Yeah. Yeah. Where'd the B go? I have yeah. no clue how I don't know. Where'd the B go? The first time I saw his name, I was very dumbfounded when the announcer started pronouncing it the way they did. <laughs> Loaned it to us. Same. Hard yeah. same. Uh, convicted murderer, already convicted, Alex Murdoch, got 40 more years tacked on to, I think it's a life sentence, for financial crimes. He was stealing money from all of his clients. So oh, he's okay, already. Because he was a lawyer, yeah. Yeah, so he's already convicted for murder. And you just get 40 years tacked so on to the top Doc of it. It's like Bernie Madoff, right? He's In a sense. Except I don't think Bernie killed anybody. Uh, well, not Yeah, Madoff. Bernie was the Ponzi scheme. This yeah, guy was, was a lawyer. Yeah, this was guy saying, was yeah. a lawyer. The financial crime. Did sure. you watch the documentary on Murdoch? I did. Bernie I, wa the... I watched, I think, two, I I think Netflix had two of them. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I watched, I watched them. It was. I, I think they actually did two seasons. Yeah, I watched the first season. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't end up watching the second yeah, season. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. That was an unbelievable oh, story. The whole family testifying and all that stuff with his son too. Yeah. Yeah. On well, cool. the way they caught him with the cell cell phone uh, audio was yeah. Yeah, the guy was not a good criminal. No, no, he was not a good criminal. Not a very smart man, this Alex Murdoch, which See, I don't even think he knows how to pronounce I his know, name. I right. know you think you were, you'd be a good criminal. So I you're would. Saying you, you, would. Do, you would do crime better than Alex Murdoch. No doubt. Okay. That's, I mean, it's a low no bar, doubt. but probably. No doubt in my mind. Right. I would do crime better than Alex Murdoch. All right. What's winning the car wreck of the day today? Pretty easy. Astros base running. If you want to specify Altuve, go right ahead. Do we need to define between the two? Between Myers and I Altuve? Mean, Myers looked pretty ridiculous last night. Which, yeah, they all looked ridiculous. But if you though. get in scoring position, you at least have a chance in that bottom of the ninth. Instead, he's like. Looking which, like he got run over by a bus. Which one was more significant? The Myers falling down halfway to second or Altuve, Altuve getting back picked? I, like, I think Altuve picked off a third. Jeez. Whoa, Brian. Easy. You know what? I changed my vote. Brian's our car wreck of the day. No, That's we got to go base running. We gotta, I, I, I earned that one. We got to go base Brian's running. I'm going to give joke. Altuve? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's another good nominee. Altuve. All right. Congratulations. Altuve. Jose Altuve is going to be in the Hall of Fame, but it'll be his second favorite accolade. His favorite accolade. The car wreck of the day from the Killer Bees. Does it for us. Thanks to Brian for the hard work up until the final 30 seconds. He's blank. I'm Brandon. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Houston, from Constellation Field in Sugarland. Soccer Matters. Glenn Davis coming up right now on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Any further and get into soccer matters, I'm going to tell you right now about the best HVAC air conditioning and plumbing company in Houston, and that is Vanderford Air, because they take care of all the things that are going to matter the most to you. If your air conditioning hasn't gone out yet, but you're worried it might when the really the heat is on, then you need to get to Vanderford Air because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee or your money back. If you are already planning on just making sure it's up to snuff before the heat gets it, they do all that kind of stuff too. From repairs to replacements, Anything from plumbing to air conditioning and everything in between, they're going to take care of you 100% of the time, 100% of the way. That means 100% money-back guarantees for the best value at the lowest cost to you. Comfort assurance guarantees, quality workmanship guarantees, performance guarantees, and the biggest thing, you call them, and within 24 hours, they're coming to you. You don't have to wait days on end if your air conditioning goes out and it's really hot. They're going to be there when you need them most. Check them out today online, but in C-O-O-L.